Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about GBS. So let's get into it. So first off, what does that stand for? Group B Streptococcus. So this is a bacteria that lives in our body. So what's special about it is it's able to survive in both aerobic and anaerobic environments. And because of that, it kind of makes it perfect to colonize places like our GI and our GU tracts. This is not an illness. Typically the patient is not gonna have symptoms. You're not gonna get sick with it. This is just like a normal bacteria that can grow in your body. And it is not an STI. So when we talk about GBS, we're usually talking about this in pregnant people. So this is a test we are screened for prenatally. And sometimes patients who've never heard of this before will say, wait, what do you mean I'm GBS positive? I don't have an STI. It's not an STI. So it's not spread through intimate contact. It's not like that at all. It is just a normal bacteria that can grow in your body. And for most adults, no issues, okay? Our concern is when it passes to the newborn. So where is it found? It's found in the vagina and the rectum. And why do we care about it so much if it doesn't cause any problems in adults? Because it can cause problems in the baby. So it is the leading cause of newborn sepsis in the United States, and one in three patients will be GBS positive. Because it is so common, everybody gets tested for this between 36 and 38 weeks prenatally. So how do they test for it? Super simple, it's just a swab of the vagina and the rectum. So they're doing a culture. So no needles, no blood, you're not getting poked for this. So this is just a simple swab done prenatally. Now you might be thinking, well hold on, a lot of people give birth before that time, right? Lots of premature preterm deliveries occur. What about those babies? What about those people? Because they haven't gotten tested for it. So if you haven't gotten tested for it and you go into labor early, it is going to be assumed that you have it. This is one of those like better safe than sorry kind of scenarios. So it's better to treat you like you have it than to not treat you like you have it when you do, right? So keeping that in mind, most people who go to term will have this done near the end of their pregnancy. Right. And what happens during delivery, what happens during a normal vaginal delivery is mom has this, it's not affecting her in any way, but they might transmit it to baby. This is called vertical transmission. So the newborn is exposed to this bacteria during the birthing process and potentially bad things can happen. So there's early onset and late onset. Early onset is within the first couple of days up until the first week. Some major complications of this include meningitis, pneumonia, and of course, sepsis. Late onset is after that first week and within the first few months of life. Um, and this is actually much more serious, but a lot less common. And how do we know? How do we know if baby's sick? What are they gonna look like? Well. They're not gonna be feeding well. Doesn't matter if they're formula feeding or breast milk feeding, they're gonna be having a hard time feeding. They're gonna have temperature instability. So remember with the newborn, they're not really good at regulating their temperature just yet because they've never had to do it before. So sometimes when they're sick, they can have these high, high fevers like we see in pediatrics or sometimes they can have these low temperatures because they're having a hard time adjusting to fight off this illness. They're gonna have difficulty breathing, lack of energy, and overall irritability. So baby doesn't look good, baby looks sick. Because it is so dangerous and can cause such horrible complications with the newborn, our goal is screening and then treatment to prevent those things, right? So the treatment of choice, the number one thing we're gonna do is penicillin. Because remember, it is a bacteria, so an antibiotic is going to be our treatment of choice. Now you might be thinking, wait, penicillin is a very common allergy. Not everyone can have penicillin safely. That's true. 
So they might need to have an alternative like a cefazolin, okay? So if they can't have a penicillin, they might have cefazolin, they might have like erythromycin, clindamycin, things like that. So that's gonna be a little bit more individual, but if they have a penicillin allergy, that's probably what's gonna happen. And you might also be thinking, well, what about C-sections? Do C-section patients need to have this if they're GBS positive? It depends. So what is the situation for the section? Is this a planned section, it's scheduled, and the patient's not in labor, and their bag of waters is intact? Then they're not gonna need any treatment. Is this a situation where their water has broken, and now they're going into a C-section? Likely they will need treatment. And then, and aside from that, if you're getting a C-section in general, whether it's planned or emergent, likely you will get some prophylactic, like a cefazolin, um, just kind of commonly prior to surgery to help prevent infection from the surgery itself. So C-section patients will automatically already be getting an antibiotic. So there's that added benefit there too, whether or not mom is GBS positive or negative, or if her water has broken or not. So it kind of depends, but in the end, it'll still be treated. It's still a good thing. We're gonna take care of these patients. So this is given IV. So you might be also wondering, well, antibiotics, they come in oral form. Um, if we test this early before they go into labor, 36 to 38 weeks, why can't we just start them on oral antibiotics before they go into labor? And that is a good question, but the reason we don't do that and we can't do that is because that bacteria colonizes so, so quickly, it would kind of be pointless. So we have no reason to start treatment prior to the onset of labor. And when we do do labor, when labor does start, we wanna give it IV, that's gonna be the most effective way to deliver this medication for prevention. So penicillin, great medicine, super helpful. Um, I was reading some studies and they said in the 70s before they kind of discovered this, there was almost a 60% rate of complications for these babies. And nowadays it's down to less than 5% because we are doing the screening and because we are doing the treatment. So penicillin is great or whatever antibiotic they need to have is great at helping prevent early onset disease in the newborn. Not super helpful with late onset, okay? So when we think about the treatment, we're thinking really more early onset. But remember, most babies who have it are gonna have early onset. Late onset is much, much less common. And if mom gets treatment during labor, then likely baby will not need treatment. Now there are some situations, right, when we deliver, and we deliver very quickly, right, or patient comes in, they're in labor, and you check them, and they're already at nine, right, and they're gonna be pushing soon. So maybe they don't have time to get multiple doses of that medication, right? Maybe they only have time for one dose of the antibiotic, or they're going too quickly and they have no time, right, for treatment. In those cases, the newborn should be treated just in case, usually with things like amoxicillin, um, just to make sure that they don't develop early onset GBS disease. And then one other thing I wanted to make sure I pointed out is the risk of sepsis is increased in preterm newborns. Remember, we want to look at all people who have not gotten prenatal tests done because maybe they're too early. We're just going to assume they have it just in case and we're going to treat it just in case. But preterm newborns are at the highest risk of having early onset GBS disease. So just something to keep in mind, just like with everything, right? Being premature just puts you at risk for everything, doesn't it, unfortunately? So that is my video on GBS. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.